In today's tutorial, let's work on this baby overalls together. This is a fabulous little pattern available in multiples of sizes. Let's get started right after this. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today's tutorial we're going to work on this baby set together and this is the overalls complete with the suspenders on the top. How sickening cute is this? Mm -hmm. That's what I'm talking about. So in today's tutorial we are going to cover how to make this right from start to finish from doing the legs to the waist to doing the straps and this is quite a fabulous little project. So without further ado let's dive a little bit more into the project and then we're going to get started. I'm making each one of these pieces individually piece by piece. So in today's pattern we're going to do each of the legs individually. So we're going to do left leg and then right leg but I'm going to be teaching you a little bit of secrets on how to do it because one leg we have to finish off completely and the other leg when we're done that one we have to start using that to be able to put it together. So once we get the legs done we're going to attach them to begin to do just the crotch area of this overalls and then we're going to be moving up to doing the waist. So basically as we start the legs are going to be individual and then we're going to join them together as we move up the waist the bib and the suspenders or the straps that they're calling in the t in the pattern is all attaching as we go. So we have to start off with the legs today and the legs are quite easy to do and I'm going to show you the t uh, secrets to getting started and then I'll leave that for you and then we'll see you back here and then we can do the crotch area and then continue to move up to the waist. The first step is is to create the legs and we need to do the one leg completely separate as a unit and then we have to do the secondary but we do not fasten off when we get that second one done because what's going to happen? We've done amigurumi like this before where it was a hand or a foot and essentially you do all the pieces but what's going to happen in this is that once we get the second one done we're going to carry the same string and then attach it together so it becomes one unit. Now with the pants they don't go together like this tight at the top. There's going to be a little bit of a gap to provide space for a diaper inside these overalls and then we're going to continue to go. So once we get the two legs together we're going to then crochet around both of them so that they become one unit at the very same time. But here's another little tip that I learned. So what we're going to do is that we're going to get started and you're going to do a striping pattern. Every two rows is, is the same color so it goes from two to two. So you take your measuring tape and you measure it out to the size that you want. So I've did in the six month size and what I've done then is once I did the first one the second size becomes really easy. I just have to match the striping up together as long as that I am changing my rows uh, as I go individually. So it's just a very easy pattern to be able to, to just really do. Um, you don't have to do striping if you don't really want to but it's completely up to you. Um, these kind of uh, projects are really subject to your own creativity. So without further ado let me show you how to get started on the legs. Today I will be doing the six month version and then you can substitute the instructions I'm about to teach you in order to do other sizes that are available within today's pattern. So in today's pattern you're going to need a four and a half millimeter size crochet hook or a US size seven if you wish. We are using Karen Simply Soft yarn today. You're going to need a total of three colors and I'm going to be using a different color scheme in order just to make it really quite interesting and that's completely up to you on how you want to play today. And you can see the instructions. The instructions are available in six months. 12 months, 18 months and 24 months to be able to make these cute little overalls. Now uh, what you have to just pay attention to is that all of the instructions are listed within brackets. So the first number is the six month, the second one is 12 months and the third one is 18 months and the next one is 24 months. Now what you have to pay attention to is what I would do is grab a highlighter and just circle the numbers that you want to pay, atten uh, pay attention to. So whenever it gives you instructions and there's brackets you just have to follow what's in the brackets in order to keep the sizing consistent. So if you circle everything in advance it helps you not make a mistake further down into the project. So without further ado let's grab our hook and some yarn and let's get started right now. So I'm grabbing my Karen Simply Soft yarn. I'm going to create a slip knot. Remember that there's slower tutorials available on our YouTube channel if you ever need to know anything more specific. Now this pattern is not a beginner's pattern but uh, it's quite easy if you just call, follow it step by step and I try my best to make sure everybody is included as we go. Now I am doing the six month sizes. For the six month it is a chain of 46. There are other size chains for the other sizes and you can see that in the more information of this video. So we're just going to a chain. So one, two, three, four and five and in my case I'm going to go all the way to 46 but if you're doing the other sizes just follow what's in the instructions and I'll see you back here in just a moment. 
So I've now completed my chain of 46 and what we have to pay attention to is not to twist the chain. So just look at your chain and just kind of stretch it out and make sure that it's not doing any weird twists on you so that it looks like it's gonna be completely flat as you go all the way around. This matters because there is no trim on the bottom of the overalls. So if your chain is all twisting at the bottom it'll be very noticeable uh, when you're working on this project. Once you think you got it just join it to the very first chain. So just insert your hook into the first chain and then yarn over and pull through to form your ring. Okay, so that begin that is what we have for the beginning. Let's move on to row number one, one. You have to pay attention here to row number one because what happens in row number one if you're gonna screw up it's gonna be right here and I'm gonna teach you some uh, things to look for in order to have success right from the very start. Now the pants are using what's called a mesh stitch and in the mesh stitch we're going to chain up one and we're going to single crochet into the very start where we did the join. So in the mesh stitch it's very easy the whole pants are done like this is that we're gonna single crochet, chain one, skip one chain and go to the second and single crochet. So chain one, skip one chain and go to the second and single crochet and you're gonna do that all the way around. It's very important as you go all the way around that your chain does not appear twisted. And after we're done this what we want to do is do a final check to make sure that you have the right amount of spaces. It's gonna be very obvious that if you have a pant leg that is off by one stitch or one spacing uh, in here and then you'll have a leg that's uh, way too big or too small and it will be very obvious. So what I want you to do on the chain is just chain one, single, uh, skip one on the chain, single crochet in the next and continue to do that. So if you have 46 chains that we started off with, if you're doing it this uh, way there is going to be how many, how many chain one spaces will there be? If you said the answer is 23 then you're right and if not <laughs> you cannot have a cookie today. So uh, continue along and we'll see you back here at the end of this round. So as we get closer all the way around we wanna make sure that this chain is not twisting. So just visualize it like a fan belt in a car that is flat all the way around. So you just wanna kinda twist it and make sure that it's going to stay so it's not going to um, be turned upside down. So you wanna look to where the up is okay as you're going all the way around and this is up for me and what you need to do at the very end okay you have to skip the last one, chain one and just single or sorry just slip stitch to the first single crochet. But before you continue pull up on a large loop like this and drop your hook. So what I want you to do is look for the single crochets and you see that there's two strings facing down that's a single crochet and if there's 46 uh, chains going all the way, way around it's half of it. So if you have the other ones whether they're 50, 54 and 54 it would be half of that number as well. So you just wanna count them and I did verify there is at least 23 of them in and what you have to pay attention to is this is where you're gonna screw up if, there, if there's not. But what I'd recommend is count again the second time you go around. So each time you go around on this we're gonna do one more of this color and then we're going to then change colors. So we've slip stitched into the first one here Okay, we need to slip stitch into the next chain one space like so. Chain one and single crochet into that chain one space. That's the moss stitch. Then chain one and go to the next chain one space and then single crochet and we're going to play within the pants and the crotch area all within these chain one spaces. So you chain one going into the next chain one space. Chain one going into the next chain one space. And you're gonna do that all the way around. So continue to do this. This is our row number, or round number two. We're going to continue this and I'm going to change color and I'm gonna show you how to do it without actually having to break your yarn and carrying your yarn up and inside of the pants so that nobody even knows that you have any loose ends going up because there won't be any. So without further ado let me uh, continue around and I'll see you back here in just a moment. Okay now that I've almost gone all the way around I'm just chaining one and I single crochet into the final chain one space. You chain one and then join to the top of the next but I wanna change my color and this is where I'm gonna do it. Now let me show you what I did on the other project here. So I carried my yarn on the interior. So if I turn this inside out you can see that the yarn has been carried on the interior so I don't have any stopping and starting other than the first one here. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. So I wanna grab your secondary color whatever color you decide I'm gonna do pink today just because I can and I'm gonna create a slip knot and I'm gonna show you how I did that. So what I'm gonna do is that I've already chained one and I'm going to slip stitch into the beginning single crochet 
But what I want to do is that I don't want to grab the blue anymore. I wanna grab the new slip knot, okay, and pull that through as my slip stitch like that. And now pink is going to be my next color. But we cannot start where we are so we have to then slip stitch to the first chain one space to start chain one and then single crochet into the same space. Okay, so you already know how to do that. So chain one, go to the next chain one space. So this project I found was a little bit more tougher to begin but once you get it started like this it becomes a really no brainer as what you need to do and for this particular um, leg that we're doing I have to go a total of six and a half inches high and the other legs are eight, nine and ten inches. There is metric available for those that prefer metric instead of uh, imperial measurements uh, there on the pattern. So I'm just going to chain one single crochet into each space and I'm going to do this for another two rounds. So this round plus one more and then I switch back to the blue again by carrying up the yarn. So I'm going to see you at the end of this round. I'll show you how to restart again with the pink and then we'll come back and then I'll show you how to carry the yarn once again as we continue along with this pattern. And then I'm gonna leave the legs up to you to do and then we'll be back and we'll start doing the crotch area together as we join the legs together near the top. So I'm coming up all the way around and you may notice the final stitch may be like really loose but that's because it's just not, the tension's not pulled on it. So don't worry about that, it will tighten up on its own. So you're going to uh, single crochet into the final chain one space, chain one and then slip stitch to the top of the beginning single crochet with the same color. Okay, so we're going to continue that same color once again. So we can't start where we are right now, we have to move over and so we go to the first chain one space once again, slip stitch, chain one and then single crochet into the same stitch. And we're going to chain one, single crochet into the next, chain one space, chain one, single crochet in the next chain one space and you're gonna continue to do that all the way around. When I come back I'm going to show you how to carry that blue back up and then I'm going to leave the legs for you to do. So let's uh, just meet there in just a moment. So I'm coming up all the way back around you'll see that there's a big gap here that's because the work has not yet been pulled and uh, that'll work out uh, really quite easily. So we're going to then just single crochet into the final, chain one and then just join it to the top. So we're going to slip stitch but we're gonna let the pink fall out of the way now. We're gonna grab the blue back up to finish the slip stitch. Okay and we're gonna pull the blue through. Okay so to finish that off like that and then we just simply just go to the next chain one space that's available to you, pull through, chain one, single crochet into the same space, chain one and continue to go. So what I need you to do is that we're gonna change colors every two rows. Just do the same concept and let me pull up the other work that I have here. So this is what it's going to look like when you get, you're going to see a little bit of an, a line here of where the slip stitching is happening. Once you just stretch things around it's going to settle down on its own. Um, you'll see in the model that it's almost invisible and it will be almost invisible as well. So in this one I had to go a six and a half so I take my measuring tape Okay, and I measure six and a half inches for it. Okay, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna fasten off completely, and then I'm gonna start a secondary. So the secondary, I just want to make sure that the spaces are the same as we go throughout the cuff. And so then I have exactly matching legs, just like so. But when I'm done the second leg, I do not want to fasten off. I want to keep it where it is, and then I'm gonna have two legs, and then we're gonna start on the crotch area. So please do this for the legs. Uh, please do all the way for the one leg, left leg, and then do the right leg, uh, identical, but do not fasten off. And then I'll meet you back here in a moment, and we'll start doing the crotch area together. So we're now ready to move on to the legs. So you have to have your legs done. The striping should match each other just like you do here and basically you just have to keep the striping pattern so it's consistent. So no matter what you finished off with you just gotta make sure the next round you're starting off with the, the opposite. So I did it so that I had two rows of the green as my finish on the one side because that was my six and a half so I made sure that the other side was also the same. So what we have is that when we do the legs they never come together like this. There's always a gap to make room for that diaper that that child is wearing and we just have to have a gap space. So what we need to do in the very first round, it looks complicated in the instructions but the reality is is that we need to go partially away the, away the round. We need to do some chain work to get it in between the crotch and then we start on the other side of the leg. So by the time we get past the first row of doing this area, both legs will be attached together and then it's smooth sailing from there on as we work our way to the top. So you'll notice 
notice that there's not, not any shaping. So it's not like a curvy girl or it's not like an hourglass figure. It is literally like a box shape going up because it has to make room for that diaper that's in the inside of the pants. So without further ado, let's uh, start on round number one of doing the crotch area and that's coming up next. So step one is that we take the left leg and we mark the very last stitch that we did with a stitch marker. In this case it's just spare yarn that's just loosely there. So I can tell where to stop and start when it comes to doing this particular leg. So the last leg, the right leg, it said do not fasten off. So I have not fastened off and I'm gonna carry my yarn up like I was before and the yarn is being carried on the inside. Let me just show that to you to prove it. So the yarn is being carried as I go and we're going to carry this continually up as we go right up to the waist. So we're going to start on this. We need to count the number of stitches and then we're going to do a chain five in between and then go for this like go all the way around and then eventually join it back at the crotch area right here and then go back around the rest of this leg. So without further ado let's uh, I'm going to change my yarn then at the very end. Um, I did fasten off with the green but I want my last color to be the new color that we're gonna start with. So like I showed you before of carrying up the yarn when you go to do the slip stitch you, I want that slip stitch to be the new color so that it's ready for me. So in this case it will be the gray again. So I'm doing mine in a little bit of a different color um, just like so and I want to just slip stitch to the first chain one space and then meet me here in just a second and I just need to review the instructions one more time and then we'll begin to go all the way around to join these legs together. So let's begin. I wanna keep the left leg close by. I have the stitch marker in here that I know where I'm gonna go. It's just off camera here so don't worry about it. It's not going anywhere. So to start off the first leg we need to chain one. Okay, I've already done my slip stitch over and we want to single crochet into the first one. So here's where we're gonna have to start counting. So we have to chain one and then single crochet into the next one. Okay, and we have to do that a total of 11 times. So that was one of 11. So I'm going to count as I go. And you can count along with me and, and that was one. So you have to chain one and then single crochet in the next to equal one. Okay, so we've already got one. So we're gonna chain one single crochet in the next is for two, chain one, single crochet in the next for three, chain one, single crochet in the next for four, chain one, single crochet in the next for five, chain one, okay that's six, chain one, seven, chain one, eight, chain one, okay this is nine, chain one, 10, chain 1 and 11. Okay, so that's what it looks like here. So if you kind of look at it here, this is the outside thigh of the child on this side. So now we have to start and join and come across the join of the legs and how to do that is that we need to chain a total of five. So make sure this chain is not sloppy. So make sure it's nice and tight because it matters. So you go on and go 1, 2, 3, 4, and five. Perfect. So let's begin the next part. So now that I have my chain five space I have to come where I've marked the last stitch. So we have to come to the first chain one space that's right after that. This is where I've joined it with the slip stitch. So I come to the next stitch. Okay it's a chain one space and I single crochet followed by a chain one and then I go to the next chain one space. So you already know how to do this. So it's chain one and single crochet in the next space. I want you to do this all the way around this leg here until you get to the point where you're actually on the other side of this chain and then I'll meet you back here and I'll show you what to do because we need to go across that chain and then back to the other side of the pant legs in order to join them. So please do that and I'll see you back here in just a moment. So we're coming up all the way around and I'm just finishing up this as we come around this particular leg and we're gonna have to jump over to the chain five here as we come and we want to follow the pattern exactly as follows. Now if you remember where I did the stitch marker that is um, the slip stitch. Okay so we have to chain one first and then we just come and we go to the first chain. Okay of your work. So just come into the first chain. Okay and single crochet and then you're going to chain one, skip one chain, go to the second over. So this is just like the beginning. Chain one, and go to the, uh, skip one chain and go to the next one. And then chain one and this time what we have to do is that we have to come to the other side. Okay, so we've come around on this pant leg on the front side and going across the, the front of the pant and now we're just gonna continue down the back side of the same pant. Okay, so chain one, I didn't, 
don't think I chain one there. So I've got to chain one and then I come to the first chain one space that's available to me. Chain one, single crochet into the next. Okay, so we've just now established this. The, the crotch area is now more solid and so we can continue then to con go completely around um, this area to create the, the crotch area as we're going all the way around. Okay, so what I want to do is that I want to do just like I did before two revolutions of one color and then two revolutions of another. So I'm gonna come all the way to the uh, start as I'm coming up all the way around here. So as I come back all the way around I just wanna carry on what I've known before is that it's just single crochet, chain one and at the very end here I want to make sure that I'm going to single crochet and then I slip stitch or chain one and slip stitch into the first one here and I wanna keep the gray going so I'm going to just slip stitch with the gray and then just move to the slip stitch to the first chain one space and then chain one and then single crochet into that space, chain one and continue. So this time you can go all the way completely around all through at the front of the pant leg, down across the crotch, back down the other side and then back up the other side. So you're gonna just continue just to continue to go around. So I'll meet you back at the crotch area just to verify what you're doing there and then I'm going to leave the rest for you in order to get the right height that you need in order to complete these pants and then we're gonna move then to the waistband after that. So I'm coming up close to the crotch area now. I'm chaining one and I just gotta move across and I wanna make sure that this leg is not twisted up in any weird way so that it's just a straight uh, shot across. Okay, so you're just gonna come in to the other side of the chain here, chain one, skip one. Okay, single crochet, chain one, skip one, single crochet, chain one and then come into the next chain one space on the other side. Okay, so that's pretty as easy as it's gonna get and then you're just gonna go all the way around as if it's a pant leg and I want you to do this for a total of so many inches and I'm going to meet you back up at the end of this revolution. I'm going to show you how to carry the yarn once again and then we'll just review on how tall you need to go in this area because this area is pretty much simple once you're beyond this particular point. Remember as you come around the pant and you're going back across the crotch area on the back side of the pant it's just like it is. The stitches are already there waiting for you to, to utilize. You're just following the pattern as is. So chain one going into the next chain one space and etc. So there's no fancy footwork from this point forward. We just wanna make sure that we're continuing to just follow the pattern and the chain one spaces. So I'm coming up near the end. I'm chaining one and then I'm gonna slip stitch to the top of the first single crochet. I'm gonna let the gray fall down and I'm going to grab in my next color which is the green and I'm just gonna pull it up and just use that as the final slip stitch for that as I'm gonna carry it. I'm going to slip stitch to the next chain one space that's available to me chain one and single crochet into the same space and continue then. So I want you to continue to do this uh, same pattern and going all the way around. So from the crotch area right from the base here to the waistband for this particular size of six butts it's five and a half inches. For the next sizes it's six and a quarter and then it's seven and seven for each of the other sizes. So what I want you to do is continue to go around in the same fashion and just continue to grow the pants up and you're doing the crotch area now and then we're gonna meet up and do the waistband after that. So continue that and we'll see you back here in just a moment. So now I'm back and I now have my crotch area done and now we're ready to start doing the waist. So at this time the pants are currently not front or back and so we have to define what is front and back and as per the instructions we need to go and look at that first. So here's a picture of the pants from the behind area here and what we have to do as per the round one of doing the waist is that we have to mark the middle stitch. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm just gonna eye it up and I'm just gonna take a stitch marker and just say this is the middle. Okay, so I'm just gonna slip in a, a stitch marker to, to indicate this is the middle here and this will give me a good starting point. So if you like to be a little more analytical you can count your stitches and do the halfway point. Now I want to tell you a little bit about the waist before we move on. 
So the waist here, what we're looking at here is in the instructions that you'll see that there's 14 rounds but you can count clearly that there's not 14 here. So what happens here is that the waist rounds are identical for all of the sizes and there's a total of 14 rounds. So from rounds one through seven, it's all just gonna be single crochet. Round number eight, we're gonna do single crochet through the back loop only and that'll create like a fold and then the rounds from nine to 14 is more just single crochet around. So what you're looking at here is that it goes up, folds over and then folds back down to give the waist some thickness in behind. So we're gonna be doing that as well. So let's begin starting with round number one on the instructions for doing the waist. So round number one, we're going to create a slip knot and we're going to join the yarn and you can join it right in the middle of the one that you marked with the stitch marker. So with this waist here, we're working within all chain one spaces and all stitches this time. So we're going to fasten this on, chain one and single crochet to the first space. So this particular round, we're gonna go into the next single crochet first stitch and then we're gonna go into the next chain one space. So every stitch including the chain one spaces are all gonna get a single crochet and when you come back all the way back around we're going to join with the slip stitch and then begin again and all of the rounds from one to seven are like this. So um, you might have to get in the habit of not chaining one after you do a stitch just because you've been doing it so much on this particular project. So please just single crochet in every stitch going all the way around. So I'm coming up all the way back around and I'm just single crocheting into every stitch including the chain one space as I go all the way around. Now I'm gonna leave the stitch marker in there just in case I need it in the future. I'm really not sure if I do because I'm kinda crocheting as I go here and I want to make sure I get into everything. So the last stitch here. So I just wanna kinda be mindful of that stitch marker just to keep it out of the way. And then I just wanna join it to the beginning single crochet. So this is round number one. So I need you to do all the way to round number seven exactly identical. So chain one to start. Okay, one single crochet into the same space as the join and then one single crochet into each one of the stitches going all the way around. Okay, so please do this for rounds number two, three, four, five, six, and seven and when I come back to you on number eight we're gonna do something slightly different and then return back to what we're learning right now. So I've now finished all the way to round number seven and now it's number eight and this is the fold line. So this is where it's gonna stop and then the rest of it is gonna fold in behind because of the stitch that we're about to do. So with this and this one here we want to chain one and we want to go into the back through the back loop only and single crochet. So just going in. So if those that are new to crochet there's always two strings. That's one stitch but if you go into the front string that's front loop and if you go into the string that's furthest away from you that is the back loop. So for round number eight I need you to go into, I'm gonna redo that one. I'm gonna go into the back loop only all the way around and then just slip stitch to the beginning front uh, first one and then I want you to return back to just doing regular single crochets for round number nine all the way to 14. Okay, so you got that. So this one is a back loop only and then just slip stitch it and then just do all the way nine to 14 with just a regular uh, single crochet in both strings which is into each stitch going all the way around. I'll see you back at the end of that and then we'll start moving on to the bib area in the front of the overalls. I've now finished the waistband and we have the line. This was line number eight and then this is the rest of it. So I want you to fold that and it will naturally fold in itself because we've done that back loop single crochet. So it's gonna fold on the inside giving the waist some thickness. Okay. So now what I want to do is that I we know the slip stitching in the back. We can see it and now we need to mark the front middle of our pants. So what I have to do is that I have to take a tape measure and that tape measure I'm going to just measure across and I wanna kinda just get it as close as I can to the front. So we have to fold this flat. It's about ten and a half inches in there. It's about twelve. So right there. Okay so I'm gonna get this stitch marker and I'm going to mark that as the center point of my pants. And using the same 
stitch. And I just want to verify that once that's in. So I'm just getting the remaining loop and just marking it here. Okay, so what I want to do is that I want to kind of just eye it up and make sure that it does look like it's in the center. Like so. And it gets a little offset if you look straight up. So I think I'm off by a little bit. So I'm just kind of gonna just eye it up and just kind of get a better shot at it again. Just gonna follow the crotch area up. I might have been off by just one stitch. It's amazing what it can look like if you're just off by one. It looks right. Okay, so now that I've marked that middle one, I'm now gonna start the bib area and let's cover that next. So the bib area is right here and we're just gonna do a few extra rows here just to fill it in. The straps are done afterwards so we don't worry about those at this moment. And what we have here is that this is the bib here. So it's just almost like a, a straight um, almost square rectangle just going up and we're just gonna start it on the front here and work our way up. Now from the center point we have to measure out and it says for the this size it's the tenth stitch out from the middle. Okay, so we just have to count 10. Now the other sizes are different. There's 10, 10, 11, 11 and you have to look at your size. So just count out 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10 and I need you to mark that with the stitch marker as well. So there is the one side of the bib here and I just wanna place the stitch marker in. You go to the other side now Again, starting on the one other side. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. And mark that. So there is the, the bib area again. Again, final check to make sure that you think it's in the center and if it's not just slightly adjust what you need at this point. Okay, so there is gonna be the bib area once we get that done. So let's move along to doing the bib. So let's begin and I'm going to just use some cream color here. I'm doing a little bit of a colored variation as you can tell. So I'm gonna come to the far side, okay, and I'm going to insert my hook into the back loop only, okay, or into the loop that's there. And what I want to do is just fasten on, okay, chain one and single crochet into that first starting. And what I want you to do at this point is that this straggler here just leave it down on top and I want you to single crochet in each one of these loops going across. And if you leave that straggler down on top it'll get stuck underneath and therefore you don't have to worry about sewing in any loose ends. So you're gonna single crochet yourself all the way to the far side stitch marker. You're gonna pass by the middle one and then go to the other side and then we're gonna start something else within the bib. So I'm getting to the other side here. I'm going right to the very last one and I'm, I'm single crocheting and I'm gonna turn my work and now this time we're gonna do exactly what we've done in this pattern here. Okay, we're gonna do that for the remainder of the bib. Now if you're doing different colors you can just do it the same way of uh, changing your colors and etc. So, so now to start this row you're gonna chain one, one single crochet in the first and we're gonna do it exactly like you've seen it over here. Exactly. Okay, so every two rows would change color. So you're gonna chain one, skip the next single crochet and single crochet in the next. Chain one, skip one, one single crochet in the next. And you're gonna do that all the way across. And this is row number two. Now the thing about it is that row number three starts off slightly different because we have to maintain this pattern that we're doing. You can change colors at any time. I'm doing a little design on the front of this bib. So I'm gonna keep the background color all the same. So I'm not gonna change colors in this particular one. Um, but again that's your creativity. You can decide what works for you. If you wanna keep it consistent that's your business. So chain one and then single crochet into the final. So once you get there just turn your work again. If you're gonna change colors go and do so. But if turn your work and this time we have to start slightly different for row number three. 
So in row number three it's a repeat of row two and three for the duration of this until you get to the size. It's three and one quarter for um, the size that we're working on today. Three and a quarter for the next size. Four and four for the next. So you chain one in row number three. Single crochet into the first one. Single crochet into the first chain one space and then begin the, the same configuration. So chain one, skip one and just go into the space. So chain one, skip one, go into the space. So it's just a matter of understanding how to start each one of these as you're going across. It's like the moss stitch of afghans that we have taught here on YouTube as well. We have that kind of configuration before. Okay, and then at the very end the final one here is one single, single crochet in the chain one space and then one single crochet into the final stitch. Let me just turn the work and show you number two again. So we're gonna turn the work. So this one starts off slightly different. So we chain one, one single crochet into the first, chain one and then go to the next chain one space here. Okay, do you get that? So they're how you start is different. So go to the size that it's asking you to do. So in my case it's gonna be three and one quarters and then when I come back um, we're gonna do something slightly different. Uh, we're gonna, we still have one more little piece of the puzzle for the bib before we move on to something else. So now I have my three and quarters and it looks like it's kind of jetting in. That's just the way it is it, and I wanna fasten off this white and I want to introduce the green that I've been using as a final that's gonna go across the very top. So I'm gonna fasten this and I'm just gonna weave this in a few of the pieces and I'm gonna turn my work and I'm going to fasten on in the green and just all I just need to do is single crochet into every stitch across including the chain one space. So let's turn our work. Let's reintroduce the green back into the picture and here we go. Start off with a slip knot and I just gotta go once across. So starting off the one side here right in the first just fasten on, pull through chain one, one single crochet into that one plus all the chain one spaces. So the next one's a chain one space so just go into that one. Next one is a single crochet just go into that one. And so I just want you to go across just as a single crochet. If you leave this down on top of the line you can single crochet around it and locking that into position so you don't have to sew that in afterwards because it'll be right underneath the stitches. So this is uh, really quite easy. So once you get across I just want you to fasten off and then we're gonna do something different. We're gonna move on to the left strap and the left strap is worked right onto this outfit as we go and I'll show you what to do when we get to that point. So please single crochet across and then fasten off and I'll see you back here in just a moment. So we're now about to start the left strap. So the left strap what's gonna happen here is that we are going to attach onto the side of the bib here and we are not going to worry about attaching at the base of the line here. Okay, so what's gonna happen is that we're gonna go back and forth. So we're gonna go along the side here for until we get to a certain amount and we're gonna continue to chain and then we're gonna come back across the chain and keep going back and forth. So this bottom area will not be attached until we do the finishing techniques on this particular child. Okay, so what you're seeing with these buttons here, these are completely decorative. Um, you can do something completely different if you wish and the ones on the back of the, of the child are completely functionable. Okay, so let me show you a photo of that. So the ones that are on the back here, those are real buttons here. Okay, so the ones in the front are just fake. So you can do some kind of decoration on the front if you wish to do something completely different as well. So let's uh, start doing a little left strap. So it says to do the left strap first. So here's a clue. So here's if you're getting any confused. So when you crochet you tend to crochet moving forward. Okay, so you So if you were to start on this side for example and you have to start on the right side of this project and then do the chain what's gonna happen is that you've got nothing, you've got nowhere to go. So what you have to do on the right, on the left strap is that we start off in the project here, go for a certain amount, then chain and then come back. And on the right strap what's gonna happen is that we're gonna do the chain first and then the last few are going to be into the bib here. Okay, so if you're ever confused this is what you need to do. So what we're going to do is that we're gonna just create a slip knot and let's begin and I'll show you where to attach the first uh, item because that attaches right to the project as we go. 
So we're now going to begin and we're going to start right where this item is attached. And let's just fasten on. So just go around that same area and fasten on like so. And we are just going to chain one and then work one single crochet into that same spot. We need to get a total of 14 single crochets along into here. Okay, so this already in, uh, was already one of them here. So we, this, we need to do 14 more. So this one, first one does not count. Okay, so you just come into the side, just evenly space it. So you go one and then two and three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, and nine, ten, and then getting close to the top so we might have to put in a few extra just really close. That was ten, eleven, twelve, okay, and I'm gonna do another one there, thirteen, and the final one will be in the top of this area here, fourteen. So now I've just satisfied my 14 there. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna chain now the rest of the strap and then I'm gonna come back. And so this area here we talked about I'm not, is not gonna be attached until after. So this is gonna be a completely separate strip at this time. So what we have to do for this particular size is that we now have to chain 40 and then come back. And so let's chain 40 and I'll see you back here in just a moment. So one, two, three, four, go all the way to 40. So now I have my 40 in. So I'm gonna go second chain from the hook and I'm going to s turn it around and get the back loop only of that one and all of them as we go. And I want to single crochet myself all the way back to the bib. But when we get to the bib we're gonna do something slightly different there. So do not um, do the single crochet as normal as you go over the bib area. So just, just meet me there and I'll see you there in just a moment. So as they get closer to the bib, I'm just single crocheting until I get to the bib area. Um, this is actually take number two. I went across the top of the bib by accident. So make sure you go down to the side back toward the waist. Okay, so once you start with the bib area, you're gonna go back loop only down through the side of it. So this whole strap, what's gonna happen is that we're gonna just play with the back loops only as we do the rest of the strapping area. Now the back we have to leave some buttonholes and we will do that as well. So when we get all the way back down to the bottom of the bib here to the waistband, we do not attach it to the waistband itself. We're leaving that open and that's a finishing technique of just sewing this strap securely to the waistband afterward. Okay, so that's effect that's done after. Okay, so we're just doing the back loops only right back to the beginning. So now let's turn our work, um, let's finish that last one first. So let's now turn our work and begin the strap again. So this time what we want to do, this is number three, we're gonna chain one, okay, and then go into the back loop only of the first one and go into the back loops only all the way back down the row. Okay, so all the way. So we will not just do a partial like we did before. So now I just finished row number three. So now I'm gonna turn to work and this time we're gonna apply a buttonhole. So this time we're gonna chain up one and continuing to go in the back loop only for number four and we want to do um, single crochet in the first. So that was one and do it again, two, number three, and four. So the first four are going to be solid. I want you to chain two, skip two, and then begin back loop double crochet again all the way down. Uh, sorry, back loop single crochet all the way down. Okay, so just continue to do that all the way back down. You now have your buttonhole in. This is row number four and then we're gonna turn around and come back as well for row number five. So I'll see you there in just a moment. Coming back to the bib area for concluding of row number four. We're gonna turn around and go for round our row number five. So let's turn our work. So we have two more rows left. So what I want you to do in the next two rows is just chain one back uh, loop with the single crochet. When you get to the chain two space, you're gonna apply two 
single crochets into the space and continue to back loop the rest. Turn our work and then come back and do a back loop single crochet on everything and then that, that's it for your strap. So that would conclude off one strap. So just a reminder, so chain up one, one single, or sorry, back loops, uh, single crochet here and into each one of the stitches all the way down in the chain two space. Apply two single crochets, continue to back loop single crochet, turn the work, chain one and do the six row just with like what you see with the, the back loop single crochet. Fasten off and you are done the strap. So I'm gonna leave that in your hands and then I'm gonna show you how to do the other side strap on getting started and then you can apply the same things that you just learned right here. As I'm getting all the way to the end of this and I'm now completely done, if I leave an extra long tail with this right now, I can use that as the sewing string to sew when I'm ready the strap to the rest of the band like this. Okay, so I can use that. So let me pull that out. So when I go to sew it, I can sew it directly to it using the same string. So let's uh, begin the other strap. So this is what the strap looks like. I got my buttonhole on the other side. It goes up over the child and then across the back. So we're going to start the other side now and the other side we start with the chain and then come into this area here. So let's begin that next. To, be to begin the next section we just start off with a slip knot and we are going to start off in, in this case for our size it's 39. So 39 chains. So 1, 2, 3, 4, five, six, seven and I'm gonna go all the way to 39 and I'll see you in here in just a moment. I now have my 39 in here and now I wanna get the other side of the bib and the next 14 stitches will be down the side of the bib. So just working 14 evenly spaced down. If you remember at the top of the other one we had ones close to the top. So this will be one. I'm gonna do another one there. It'll be two and then keep moving down. 3, 4, okay and this fifth one is getting on my nerves here. Let me retry number 5, uh, 6, 7, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and I'm gonna add one more there. This is fourteen and I'm gonna add one right to the base here which is B15. Okay, so now I want to turn my work and we're gonna just do the straps just like we did before and we chain up and we go into just in this in the bib area only into the back loop because you can and then it's just regular chain work then and the rest of it and we're gonna do it exactly the same way. So we're just gonna do back loop only for single crochets in the bib and then we're just gonna single crochet along the other part of the chain and then we'll turn around and come back in the other direction. So please do that and I'll see you here in just a moment. So I'm just finishing up row number two and I'm just continuing along on the chain and let's turn our work and go for row number three. So row number three just quite straightforward is just a chain one and one single crochet in the back loop all the way back down to the bib uh, area and go all the way to this all the way. Okay so don't stop at the bib just keep on going single crochet in the back loops all the way down. So I'm just finishing up row to three I'm turning my work now this time on row number four we have to put the buttonhole in there. So what we're going to do is that you're going to do a single crochet back loop to the final sixth and then you'll leave this uh, the six and the seven or six and five or five and six empty and then you'll just chain two and then you'll just single crochet in the back loop the final four. Okay so just just kind of like you did it before is just a little bit opposite because of the, the side that we started on. So it's a single crochet in the back loop only. Go to the sixth stitch right before, chain two, skip uh, six in the fifth stitch and then just um, just single crochet in the back loop for the remaining for that and I'll see you there in just a moment. So I'm coming close to the end. Here's the sixth stitch just before the end. I'm gonna chain two, skip that stitch and the fifth stitch and then I'm just gonna single crochet 
in the back loop for the final four. So one, two, three, and four. So that concludes off row number four. Let's turn our work. So five and six are absolutely identical to each other. So you're just gonna chain one and single crochet in the back loop for all the way down. Please do that for the next two rounds for our rows for five and sorry for five and six. And then fasten off and the straps are done and you're pretty much almost done your your uh, item. So what we have here, here's the buttonhole. Just apply two single crochets into that space and then hit the next start up again back loop only. Okay so do that and then uh, this is row number five. Do it one more time for six and you are good to go. Fasten off and we'll carry on from that point. So we have two more things to do before we are completely done this project. So the one strand can be extra long here. We have to add an extra one here. We have to attach the straps down to the front loops of what you have here. So you just gotta basically just whip stitch it into position. Let me show you how to do that. We also have the waist to deal with afterward. There's an elastic waist inside of the band as well. So we're gonna be uh, doing that. So coming with your darning needle just around the front loop only. Okay and then just back up into the strap and then come into the next loop and you're just gonna work your way back to the bib area. And if you feel more secure then you can just do it twice but you don't want to be too crazy with it because you, you want it look like it's uniform without it standing out. Okay. So what you want to do is when you do the other side you kind of want to count how many of these front loops you did on the outward so that it can be equal on the other side as well. There we go. Okay. So it looks pretty good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna slide the, the needle in behind and I'm gonna secure this in behind where the child is wearing it. So coming in. So the item can never stretch in three different directions. So what I want you to do is just slide the needle in behind some fibers and just put it through a loop like this. You do that twice. That will really secure it into position. So let's deal with our loose end. So if you slide the needle end underneath some fibers, don't go to the front side at all, just under some fibers in three different directions. It'll never fall out. So one, go back in the same direction but through a different path for two and then do the third going across like that. And then you'll be able to safely cut that string right there so that it's not even a choking hazard or concern. And I want you to do the same with the other side. Okay, so just whip stitch it in a position, make it look good and um, we just have to do the waistband and I'm gonna explain how to do that as well. So now it's time to deal with this fold. So what they're gonna, you're gonna do is that you're going to put a one inch elastic that you can probably buy at a craft store and it's like uh, fabric elastic. It's meant for your clothing. It's not elastic bands. And you are going to do it to measure to the size and make sure that you leave a one inch gap uh, extra so that you can sew the, the band together. And then what you need to do then is so here's what we need to do. We need to deal with the inside of this and there's going to be a band, elastic band on the inside. Remember it's not rubber band, it's, it's for clothing. And what you need to do is that you need to sew this into position. Okay, so sew all the way around and you wanna leave a one inch gap here at the back. Okay, so you can actually get an elastic in and then all the way around. If you can figure out how to get the elastic in and do it and do it without having to slide it in, that's completely up to you. And then once you get it in then you just sew it and then you can just measure it to a child if you wish in order to get the elastic to be nice and snug. So then what you're gonna do then from that point is that these are the straps. They will cross over in the back. So you can cross over and you can just measure to see where it's gonna go. See like this. And then the other one will go in the other direction and probably to the same area on this side. Okay and you'll sew in buttons and these will be functionable just like this. So that's basically it for this particular tutorial and uh, I'm going to do something kind of fun with the front. I left a white spot there so I can do some kind of uh, design on the front if you wish. That's completely up to you.